and you guys are going to set up, and you're going to be able to figure out how healthy your lungs are. <clears throat> All right. So what we're looking at respiratory system today is something called respiratory volumes and capacity. So you can find this on page 79 of your lab manual. you can breathe in and out. So this graph is kind of showing you all the basic volumes and capacities that are measured. Volume is just the amount of air you can take in and out of your lungs. Capacity is just the sum of some of the volumes. So we're going to focus on two today. two cups of air out. This, what do you think happened right here? What did the person do? Deep breath in. Now this person inhaled a lot, right? This would look like, right? Really getting all of that air in. So that would be a huge inhalation. And then right here, what did the person do? Exhale. Exhaled it all out, all right? So what you guys are going to do for your vital capacity, you're going to be breathing normal, and then you're going to inhale as much as you can, and then blow all of the air out. And then so this huge drop is going to be your vital capacity. 
So let me realistically show you what it's going to look like when you measure. So you guys are going to open up um, the Logger Pro program. on your computer, and you're going to attach okay, so everyone first needs one computer, you're going to get the go link to get the attacher, and then you're going to grab one of the boxes, and what the box is going to have inside of it is a spirometer. So this spirometer helps detect how much air is being inhaled and exhaled. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this barometer <clears throat> and you're going to put this, this is a bacterial filter, so that way it catches the bacteria that goes in and out. It'll have inlet on one side. You want to attach this to the inlet side. And then this is going to be your mouthpiece that you're going to blow in and out of. All right. So this is one time, or not one time use, but one per person. Right, and disposable after you finish the lab today. So you're gonna put that like this, so this is your contraption. And all you're going to do is blow air in and out. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do the default is going to look like this. You're going to collect to about 50 seconds. And according to your instructions, what you want to do is just do some normal breathing first. So your instructions will tell you to basically stand up, take about four cycles of breathing in and out, and then after that, do your huge inhale and your huge exhale. So I'm going to demonstrate for you guys. You can kind of see what's happening on my graph. Watch me. What do you think was happening here? What was I doing here? Normal breathing, right? And then what did I do here? Max exhale. Max inhale and max exhale. So this is just flow rate. So what you want to do is you're, you you want to get to the volume. So the default is flow rate. If you click on the second option up here, it says lung volume. <clears throat> and this is the graph that you want to use, the lung volume. So this is what I explained to you every time I inhale and exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. This was my huge inhale, and that was my huge exhale. Okay. okay. So then what you can do is take a regular volume and you just <coughs> Do that same trick we did last time, just drag from a maximum peak to a minimum peak for my regular air volume. Look at the change in Y. The change in Y is your change in liters. Okay, so notice this is 0.96 liters. So that would say, hey, my regular tidal volume is 0.96 liters, or you want to convert it to milliliters, you just times it by 1,000. So that's 960 um, milliliters. To get my vital capacity, I'm going to take my huge peak here and go all the way down to my minimum peak here. So same thing here, and then drag it all the way to the bottom. Right. And then look for my Y, 2.5 liters. So that's saying that my lungs can hold about 2.5 liters of air. Right. Questions on the measurement? Yeah. Sorry, how does the flow rate correlate with this? Like, they They're basically inverted. Okay. Flow rate is taking liters per second, and then it's converting it into what the vol actual volume is. Okay. okay. 
So everyone can participate in this. You can get your, again, normal tidal volume and then your vital capacity. Okay. And then what you're going to do is compare it to see if you're healthy or not. So you've got a table on page 81. Tidal volume, again, average tidal volume is about 500 milliliters. So that's based on a healthy, tall, young male. So you'll write down your test results, and then you'll compare what you look like relative to the average. The second one you're going to do is vital capacity. This one. So the rest of them don't worry about it. So again, we're just doing tidal volume and vital capacity. Here's something special about vital capacity, though. Yes, there's a generic 4,600 expected, but again, that's for the healthy, tall, young male. When they say healthy, tall, young male, they're talking about a male who's about six foot tall, young in his early 20s, okay? I'm looking at the classroom and I'm thinking, most people here are not male and not about 20 years old and not six feet tall, right? So would you expect your vital capacity to be exactly 4,600? No, okay, let's take into consideration a few things. Let's take into consideration, first of all, gender. Do you think being male or female affects how much air your lungs can hold? Yes. Yeah. In general, who might hold more air in their lungs, male or female? Male. Why male? Yeah, just to look at the way thoracic cavity is built. For a male, just the anatomical structure, they tend to have larger thoracic cavities, larger rib cage, which means they can just have larger ribs, larger lungs. Right, so in general, given a male of the same height, even the same age, versus a female of the same height and same age, that male is gonna have a larger lung capacity. Right, just because the anatomical structure of the male is slightly different. Okay, what about age? How might that affect <clears throat> your lung capacity? Shrinks with age. You think you're gonna peak at some point? Yeah. Right? What's going to happen as you get, let's say you hit like your 60s and 70s, what happens to your lung capacity? Less. It starts to decrease, right? But what about if you're like a really little kid, like four or five years old? Hasn't grown fully yet. How big is a four or five year old lung? They're pretty small, right? So you're going to notice that super young, you're not going to have a big lung capacity because you're just physically not grown yet. At some point, you're going to peak. But then as you get older, your lungs just don't work as efficiently, so at some point it's going to drop again, right? So age is going to be really important, too, in your lung capacity. And what about height? Who's going to have a larger lung capacity? Someone who's really tall or someone who's really short? Tall. Why tall? More space. Yeah, again, taller, you're going to have more space, you're going to have larger lungs. So notice, the taller you are, if you're male, Right? And if you're at kind of that peak, young, healthy age, like in your 20s, you're going to have the highest lung capacity. Whereas if you're a female, you're like you know, 70 or 80 years old and really short, you're going to have a lower lung capacity. So we actually have in your lab manual, on page 81, you have kind of the expected vital capacities for someone who is male or female and a given age and a given height. So what I want you guys to do is take a look and find what your predicted vital capacity is for you. So if you're female, you're going to use the first table on page 83. And it says at the top, vital capacity for females. If you're male, you're going to use the next table on page 84. And then you're going to do have two factors. You're going to have age going down. So <coughs> by row and by age, it's going to start off at 16. And it's going to go all the way up into the 70s. And then on the top, you're going to have height. The height is in centimeters. Do you guys remember how to convert your height in, from feet and inches to centimeters? Nope. So quick. Right, get your height in inches. Right, you guys know how to do that? So if you're like, say you're five feet, six inches. Okay. Five feet, we know for every one foot is how many inches? Twelve. 
right? So that's going to be 5 times 12, so the feet cancel out. So 60 inches plus the extra 6 inches. So now you're all in inches. So someone who's five foot six would be 66 inches. Now to get that into centimeters, you put it over here. Sixty-six inches, and then the conversion is for every one inch is two point five four centimeters. So now all I have to do is multiply by 66 times 2.54, right? Which, let's see what that equals. Punch that into your phone. Anyone have that? 66 times 2.54, 167. So let's say I was female, let's say you're 20 years old, you would go to 20 and then you'll find across the top 160, roughly eight. So a female who's 20 years old and five feet six inches would have a vital capacity of about 3,330. That's the predicted. Right? So you're gonna find yourself on the chart. two as a class, how did we compare? Is our class healthy overall? So I'm going to have an Excel sheet up here, and then when you guys get your vital capacity down, you're going to put in the Excel sheet what your vital capacity was and what your expected was, and then we'll get class data. All right. Okay, so go ahead, get a computer, check out a computer for each group, grab one of these boxes that has the setup for the respiratory system, and measure your lung. And then keep an eye out on the time, hour and a half is your second urinary sample. 